for your life. Yay. I think we are. Hi, everybody. I'm going to go ahead and play the intro. We're going to jump in and get started. Yay! You can see on my screen I was doing some searches there. <laughs> We're, um, as usual, guys, thank you for to uh, all of my moderators. Thank you for my Ko-fi and Patreon supporters. Thank you all of my new um, YouTube membership subscribers. Greatly appreciate all of you. We are going to be doing paper flowers tonight. Um, we're having a girls night. Uh, we're going to take our time and make some flowers and, and talk about some different techniques that you can use on flowers. So that being said, we're, if everybody wants to open up and, and follow along, I have not cut anything. We are going to be cutting from step one all the way up to putting it together so that you guys know how to find your flowers and how to assemble them and put them together. So if you have your design space open and if you get stuck and you have questions, put them in caps and the moderators are going to help you and answer those questions. Okay? Hi Susan, you're running a little late, that's okay. Thank you everybody for joining me, I greatly appreciate it. Um, we are going to go ahead and jump in and get started. Uh, the first thing you want to do is also, if you're while you're cutting, you can gather up your tools and things like that, and you can still hear me talking and stuff. But you're going to go into Design Space, and what you want to do is click on a new project and come to Images. And then when you get to Images, we're going to go over here to the top, and we're going to look right here beside our search box, and we're going to click Cartridges. And then you can type in the word flower. Now when you do that, it's going to bring up everything that has flowers in it. Um, some of the 3D flowers and stuff are found on this Close to My Heart cartridge. You'll find some there. Um, let's see. You'll find some in the felt. Now you can use paper or felt for these right here. Um, we've, I've done them in paper many times. So it just depends on the look you want. Um... That's probably, I don't know if this is going to pull up. We'll try it. Here's your ranunculus. It's right here. Uh, it's a 3D. So you can pull that one up. It's just the only one on that cartridge. And it won't let me go back. I have to go back and type flowers again. Um, or flower or flowers. Either one. You have the anemone flower right here. I don't know why my picture doesn't pull up. This, this one can be difficult to see. It's a printable, that's why. So that one is just a printable. Um, let's go back. You also have, right here you have your flower shop. There are 50 flowers in there, guys, but those are layered up and you can change those out and make your own style and your own flowers. We talked about that in another live video at one point. You don't have to make them like they have them set up. You can go in and you can mix and match and, and make almost any kind of flower you want. And then you have the giant flower cartridge. Guys, most all of your flowers that we're doing can be shrunk down or they can be blown up. So you can make different size flowers. When I do my tutorials, I usually try to keep it small. I think I've done like one giant flower, and it's just hard to get it on screen so that you guys can see it well. But we do have one, and most all of your giant flowers are going to assemble basically the same way as the smaller ones. Um, you will have like a, a base piece that you will put them on, and I showed that in my giant flower video that I did. So there are ways to do it, and if you get stuck, you can ask me. We can always come up with a solution if what you're doing isn't working. Um, let's see. 
let's go back down there. So we have the Giants. And then here we have the 3D Elegant. Down here you also have some more. These are printables down here. But you have several. We're going to make everything on this cartridge tonight. Elegant 3D Flowers. There are 10 of them in there. We're going to make them all. Now I am not going to throw them all into my design space because we don't want to get them mixed up if you want to bring all of yours over and keep them sorted out you can but i'm only going to bring in one at a time so that you guys can see clearly everything going on if i was just doing this on my own i'd just throw them all in there we're going to start with this lotus we're going to insert our image oops let's try that again <laughs> i'm having an error there there we go Select it. I'm not going to resize this. I just bumped it. I'm going to leave it like it is, but I am going to ungroup it. And I'll tell you why. I am working with 8.5 by 11 inch paper. Let me pop over and show you guys what I'm going to be using. Everybody got their, their wine, their chocolate, their coffee, all that good stuff. <laughs> Now, this paper here is, did it transition over? It did not. Let me make sure I get my camera to open. It's a black screen. There it goes. This is the dahlia that I did, and I put the video out. If you want that file, you have to be a supporter. But this is the paper dahlia that I have done. Um, very sturdy, very hard. Guys, this is super, super, super nice. I hope that it's showing up on camera. I did spray a little bit of spritz spray on it just to see what it would do for some um, shimmer. I like it better without the shimmer, but it is what it is. But you can make these. And you, all I'm using is my paper from Michaels. And this week it's on sale. I don't, I don't know when the sale ends. But it's on sale for $3.33 a pack. Okay. Is 65 pound it is solid core you want to watch that if you're buying other papers you want to make sure that you're buying solid core papers you don't want a white core um, white core is not going to give you as nice of a looking flower and it comes in different colors and in, in packs and here's like the reds the one I showed you were the earths that's what I get my green out of and some of my blues um and some of the browns too because you might use some of the browns in flowers so the earth pack and the reds pack and then the blush pinks i get all of those um, when i'm doing flowers and i use the 65 pound now i don't buy it in the 12 by 12 packs because it's not as economical so i do buy it in eight and a half by 11 sheets if you're doing giant flowers, I'm going to suggest that you get the 12 by 12s, okay? I don't do a ton of giants because I just don't have anywhere to put them, and so I don't, I don't do that many giants. So back over here, because I'm using 8.5 by 11, what do I need to do? First, I need to set up for it so that it will cut properly and not uh, cost me a lot of paper. And let me show you what I mean. If you look here and I change this to an 8.5 by 11, it's going to make me cut on two sheets. Those two petals will fit on this sheet. But when I change to 8.5 by 11, I no longer, and this is, I think, a glitch that Design Space needs to be fixed on, I no longer have the option to move my pieces. If I have it on this, then I get the box and I can move the object. But when I have change it to 8.5 by 11, I can't. Now, um, let's see if I change it back, if I can move it and then do it. But see, I can't. There's no way to move it on the 8.5. You can move it here. You can do that and move them all. To me, it's just easier to, to set it up that way, especially if I'm going to be doing many, just to set it up in the canvas. I think it's a glitch they need to fix. So I'm just going to bring these up and fit them into a eight and a half by 11 inch pattern. So if you're working with me, you'll want to set yours as well. And you just want them in an eight and a half by 11 inch space. Um, actually eight and a quarter by 11 and a quarter. 
that's what they want to fit in and you can put a square in there and make sure they fit on that square I'm just going to select it and now I'm within those size areas so I'm just going to attach now that I'm attached I'm going to hit make it and now we're going to cut and then we'll talk about some more stuff in design space while this one is drawing because this one this one takes a little bit of time because of the drawing on it and we can skip that if you guys want and color it uh, but it won't be as pretty as the drawn uh, that's one of the the pretty things about this flower so let's pop over and get our mat ready for all of our newbies I'm using a green mat that's what I prefer if you prefer a blue mat uh, blue mat is perfect don't worry about that and let's get a sheet of green and then I'm going to do mine in white. If you want to do it in a blush pink, you can do that in a blush pink too. It would be really, really, really pretty. And we're just going to stick our paper on there. I do not mash it down on my green mat, especially when it's new. Don't need to. And I'm going to load my mat. All right. And now we're going to hit continue in design space. and it's going to connect and it's my material that I'm going to choose I'm just going to choose the regular cardstock 80 pound even though it's 65 pound um, because it depends on how sharp or dull your blade is okay hey Paula and once you have that selected it's going to tell you to load your tools and material which is the fine tip uh, pen or and it's telling me my neon orange I am going to use, I'm just going to use my gold glitter. I do have my orange in there, but I'm going to use my gold glitter. I don't want mine to be as prominent with that pink. So I'm loading my pen, and then we're just going to hit the cut button and let that begin. So while we're over there, Let's talk about some of the tools that you guys might need while it's cutting that. I had a question that asked what these tools were. This is your paper crafting kit that you get at Cricut. I think they are sold out right now, guys, but you can find them on Amazon and other places or in your craft store, Michaels, Hobby Lobby, Joann's. If you're going to be doing a lot of flowers, you'll want to invest in this or one from Amazon. It does come with your quilling tool. Now, if you don't have these tools tonight, don't worry about it. There are things that you can improvise with, and we're going to show you those. And then you have a distressing kit. A lot of people don't know what that is. I'm going to grab a scrap here from the flower I made yesterday. Your distressing kit will take the edges of your paper and it will distress it for you and give you those rough edges and things like that so that's what your distressing does and you can also use it for a curling tool I've used mine for that many times either end so it'll help you curl your flowers and then you have a, a pad that's going to help you with angles and stuff like that if you need to do some trimming or if you want to uh, do some lines on it that's going to help and then the back side is like a foam and we use that when we're doing using our paper tools to cup flowers and give them those curves as you can see that I got with this one I used the fondant tools or the McGill paper tools you can use either one these come in a set they're about five bucks on Amazon there's a link down below and then the McGill ones are a little more expensive, but they come in a set that has the tweezers. It also has a, I think it has a flower pad. I don't know if mine came with this flower pad or not, but again, it's a piece of foam. What if you don't have those tonight? You can use your, a mouse pad. Anything that's got a little bit of density to it that you can use to get some give, okay? You want to have some give. Um, you might need an awl or a paper piercing tool. 
okay and it's just pointed it's almost like a weeding tool except you have a longer shaft on it um can use those this one's a little short that's my tim holtz one these i don't know i think these are quilling tools for different quilling these used to belong to my mom and there's a bunch of different sizes so i don't know if that's what they are or if that's what she used them for but she did a lot of quilling and i've got her tools and i use those as well and it has a bigger gap in it i actually think these she used to do quilling with aluminum cans and i really think that this is what these were for because the gaps on them are so large um, and they're different sizes and then you're going to need some ink pens things like that maybe a bone folder you can use wooden skewers you can use all sorts of stuff like this for your working with your papers. If you're going to be doing stemmed flowers like these, you're going to need floral wires and tape. Um, but that's only if you're going to put, put them on a stem. If you're going to be putting them on cards or boxes, you don't need any of that. Or if you're going to be putting them on poster board and hanging them, you don't need stems for that. But you stems come in all different sizes. They come in 22, 18, 26 gauge. I think they come in 16 gauge. Um, all different sizes. And what I mean by wires, if you guys have never seen them, they're like these little floral stems. Okay. So you would need some of those only if you are doing stems. Okay. And I have videos showing you how to do those and how to make your stems and, and put them on that way. You're going to need glue guns and hot glue. You may even need wet glue and pop dots, foam dots, depending on how you want your flowers to look and put them together. Myself, I like to make the flowers become more realistic looking. Uh, and I think that's what a lot of us are trying to achieve. Yeah, she made them from aluminum cans. Do you remember that, Leona? <laughs> Most people don't remember a lot of this. Um, so, I mean, they're fl doing flowers out of different materials and using different techniques has been around for a really long time. Um, so, I mean, if you look at this, it looks like I used cray paper, but I didn't use cray paper. I used the 65-pound card weight from Michael's. So, I mean, there are ways to get these looks and, and ways that you can do it just by playing around with your cardstock. So, don't be afraid to lose cardstock and, um, and play around. I mean, just play around. And just because when you look at these flowers that we're doing tonight, just because they're set up that way doesn't mean we have to do them the way that they're set up. We can change the size of them. We can change the pens and the writing. And I did my, I forgot to change my pen. I put in the wrong pen. So mine are going to be yellow. <laughs> They're going to be gold. I'll show you guys. See, even I mess up. That's supposed to be pink. Oh, well, it's going to be reversed because that's just the way that it is. And we're almost finished with the writing, I think. So does anybody have any questions? Boston baked bean color. Yeah, that's that's the dark in the reds pack from Michaels. I haven't had those in years, Boston baked beans. The candy. So does anybody have any questions about any of the tools and things that you can use? Uh, this one Leah Griffith puts out. This one is also used for for curling. But you can find these, and I'm going to show you a little use for that in bone folders. These, I use both of these the same way. You can use the tweezers that close, auto-close, the pinchy ones. So gather up your tools. We've got that going. Let's pop over and open up another window. Let's see. You 
you guys can't see it because if you need a second design space window, you can click on, well, when you're on your design space, if you look at the top of your window, you'll see file and go new window. And when you do that, you can get a second design space window to work in. It is called the paper crafting kit, Donna. Paper crafting kit. And we can come over and I can show you a couple of them on Amazon too. Let's see if I can get the window to resize for you guys. Um, I know that they're sold out on right here. Oh, this one this one has the stylus and everything with it um, that's not bad um, that's coming it looks like it's by Cricut has the weeding tool or paper piercing tool has the distressor has a scoring stylus has the pad get all of those in that one um, it's the only one that I see from Cricut here you have your quilling and your tweezers and things like that. Here are all the different size quilling ones. $9.98 is not bad. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, let's look up. McGill Flower Tools. There, these are the ones that I use. These right here, these are the tweezers and the three different sizes. And then I use these up here too. This is a um, nine piece set. It has a metal shaft in, the, in these big ball ones. If you don't want the whole set, all these teeny tiny ones, if you do clay and stuff, you might want them all. Um, let's see. Here's one with a pad, but you can see they're fondant tools, clay tools, all of these things can be used. Here's a paper blossom molding kit. That's where you can get your pad. That's the little pad right there, the pink one I showed you. That's what that is. Um, let's see. They used to be able to get these four or five by themselves. And I don't see them now, but I bought mine years ago. Here's your Fisker, uh, paper curler right here. This is a Sizzix uh, crease and curl tool. Now, if you're doing larger flowers, guys, I have one of these too. It does come in very handy. So if you need that, if you want to get that tool, then you will have that as well. I'm going to switch my pen, even though it's a little redundant at this point to do that because I put in the wrong color pen to start with. <laughs> um, here's the bone folders uh, that I use for this. I used to use it for my cards and then Jamie sent me a Teflon one. But you can see, guys don't buy these template kits. You can make these. I, I have shown in other videos how to make them. You don't have to buy flowers. You don't have to sign up anywhere. Um, we have giant flowers in design space and I've shown you how to make your own petal several times. Um, let's see. That's about it. You can also look up fondant tools. Maybe find some smaller kits in there. They've got them here. They used to have them by themselves in here. There they are. $7.99. They were five bucks when I got them. Now they're eight. There's one for $6.89 on Prime. Just look around. So if you just need those, then just get those. But they do come in handy. They're going to help you with your flowers. They're going to give you a realistic look, especially with the cardstock ones.
So does anybody have any other questions about the tools that you're going to need when you're making flowers? Any design space questions? I know that we've got about a 30 second lag, so I'm going to give you guys a minute to respond. Oh, you're welcome, Andrea. I am just so happy that all you guys are with me tonight. Um, and again, I apologize that I didn't do this one ahead of time, but I wanted to make sure that you guys knew that we were doing these from start to finish, step by step, so nobody missed anything and everybody is on the same page and can follow along at the same time. Anybody have any other project questions or anything while the drawing on this is about to finish up? We are at 80%. It's right here, drawing those lines. What do I store my Nouveau drops in? You're trying to find a container to put them in. Actually, Patty, all of mine, let's see if I can pull it up. All of mine are stored on my island shelf. Um, I have a little, like two inch shelves that go on, let's see. That's how mine are stored. All my new bow drops are right here. Yes, a brayer is absolutely worth it, Paula, especially if you're using blue mats, you're cutting vinyl, things like that. That brayer and fabric, that brayer is gold. A lot of people have trouble when they are cutting vinyl and it's lifting up and it's very intricate and it's not staying, it's not cutting right. Your vinyl, you will notice a vast difference in how your vinyl cuts if you use that brayer. But that is how mine are stored. Before that, Patty, I had them in, I don't know if you've seen them, you can get them at like TJ Maxx and stuff. Um, nail polish shelf holder thingies. <laughs> I don't know what they're called. Um, let's see if I can find it. Um, they were like a nail polish organizer. It was the little ones that you use, like in your bathroom, a little bathroom shelf that would sit on the counter or you could hang it on the wall. Um, those are the ones that I used before that. So if you don't have a lot of Nouveau drops, you could use, you know, like these. It was similar to this, but mine were metal. And then they have shelves like this, little racks like this that you can get. But mine was a small one, similar to that. Not quite that big, not that elaborate. Pretty tiny. So you can store them. They make little risers like this, and that's saying $1.27. It's off AliExpress, so I'm, I'm not going to go there. But uh, if you want to go to AliExpress and buy them, then you can. But they seem to work fine for me. Little makeup shelves. Use your imagination. You can store them on just about anything. Again, if you don't have many, buy one of the clear shoebox type organizers and, and pop them in there. All right, so we're almost done with cutting. We're at 50, 60 percent. I'm going to come over here in this new window so that while that one's finishing up, we're going to pull in our next project because while we're making one, I'm going to be cutting one. Okay, so I'm going to go to New, and I'm going to go to Images, I'm going to go to Cartridges, and I'm going to go to Flower. Actually, I'm going to go to 3D Flower. And right there. Grab that. 
and I am going to put in the second one, which would be the rose. And we're gonna, I'm gonna cut two or three of these. Let's cut two of them. I'm gonna duplicate it, and I'm gonna make one a different color, just so I can keep it separate. And then we'll get that one. That one will be ready to make. This, yeah, so you can do that too. There, there are tons of ways that you can store those. So let's pop over here to the overhead. And I am going to load up a second mat so that we can go ahead and I'm just going to place my green for my leaves, and I'll probably use this piece for more than one. I'm just going to load that up, and we're going to work on the flower. I told you I put mine in backwards, pink and gold. Make sure you color yours correctly. <laughs> and then I like to kind of remove all of my excess and then remove mine but if you you can remove from the mat the way that you want I get it started and then I roll my mat just roll it in half don't try to crease it it'll crack and it will break and then you can see the pieces start to lift off of it and I am intentionally letting it curl my ends I'm getting that started for me don't pull them from this side, pull them from the large side because this is the tip of the petal. That way my mat is going to help me get some curl, save me a little time because this particular flower doesn't need a lot of curl, okay? So what I'm getting off the mat is probably going to be sufficient other than just um, Putting it together, my my glue gun fell over and hit my keyboard and started iTunes. We don't need that going. Would be nice, but YouTube says no. <laughs> so then I'm just going to pull this out. I probably need a new blade. And I'm going to eject my mat. And then, to get this one started, he doesn't want to come up. So... I have and get that lifted up. Just gonna use my spatula and go in, try to pull it up because those are delicate. So just to get those to lift, and then I can start lifting these pieces. And you want to be delicate and walk your way around. You don't want to tear your paper. stuff there. There we go. Let's wiggle it under and work it. And now we have that piece off of there. And then again, I'm just going to, this mat is seasoned, so I'm just going to leave my paper on there. I'm just going to pop these out because I'm going to use this green again. So I'm just going to leave it on the mat. All right, now we're ready to work on this flower. While this one is working, I am going to close out of that design space window because I'm not saving it. I'm going to open up my other one, just so you guys can see. Got this one opened up. I've got two in there, and again, I am cutting these to the size that they came into design space. I'm not changing any sizing at this point. Um, and you can change your sizes because if you cut one at the size that they come in at, it's going to give you a guideline as to how big or small you want to make them. Okay? So I am just going to hit make it. I'm cutting two of the same flower out of two different colors because we're going to use two different techniques. Um, and I'm going to be using 8.5 by 11. 
And if you only have to change this if you're, you have several sheets doing the same color. If you change one color, they'll all change. So I'm just going to hit continue. And I'm going to continue cutting while we make the other flower. So I'm going to do one out of dark red and one out of the light red. Just placing it on my mat like I did before. I know you guys can't see that, but I'm just going to select my material and I am using 80 pound because I need a new blade and I don't want to change it out. And I'm just hitting cut. So let's go over. I apologize. Goes together. These do not go together like this. They don't hook onto anything. Uh, I'll show you here in just a moment. If you don't have a quilling tool, you can put a small piece of a glue dot or anything that will make it stick and hold it. And even possibly just hold it and get it started and, and roll it on a. But it does make a difference in how the center of your flowers look. So if you'll want to take that into consideration when you're choosing your tools. You're just going to roll it. Yeah, I, I, I do get a cleaner cut sometimes. So I'm just going to continue rolling. And I like to kind of mash mine up because cardstock can be stiff. If you're using paper, it's going to roll better. You can use paper for rolled flowers and or the pearl papers. They work really well for rolled. So I'm just kind of squishing mine here at the base as I roll it. And when I get to right here, I just, from there, just hold it and roll. I just want to get it to roll around. Right here, this round tab, I'm just going to fold it over. Okay? I don't need to roll it at that point. And I'm just going to shake that and get it a little bit loose. And again, my colors are backwards. My tip should be pink and the um, inside of the flower should be the gold. But I wasn't paying attention to what pen I stuck in there. Now you can use wet glue at this point. I use art glitter glue uh, a lot, uh, but I'm not gonna. I'm gonna use both glues on this flower. I'm gonna use a hot glue and a wet glue. Yay, new subscriber! But for this, I'm gonna use a little hot glue because it's easier. It's quicker. Welcome, welcome. I do not curl my petals first because I don't know where they're gonna land, Jody. Um, and I like to put my curl where it's needed. So I'm just going to kind of glue that center up. Just kind of tighten it. Because this is what this is. This is the center of your flower. And I actually, myself, this flower takes too long for me to do two of the techniques. I would actually flip this over and I would use Copic markers in a pink and, or the gold and color the back of mine as well and then um, use it to do the back side of the leaves as well. I usually don't use a pen. I use an ink pad. I use Copic markers but there are several techniques that you can do with your flowers. Let me grab a pink one just so you guys can see that's not showing up. Um, Let's see. Here we got a pink. So you could take your petals, the back of your petals, and you can draw those lines on there instead of letting your Cricut do it. You can layer up that color and get that color as dark or as light as you want. And that's just going to give you different views as you look at the flower from different angles. So if it's going on a wreath or something like that where the backs of your petals may show, you may want to do that. We're not going to do it here just for time purposes on this flower because this flower takes so long. And I'm just going to peel my mat for this other flower that we're about to move on to. 
and let it be cutting the second one so that we have all of our flowers going. So now I have my center, it's cool. What about these guys? All of these petals have a slit at the bottom. And what you're gonna do is take, you can use hot glue or you can use wet glue. For this, I prefer wet glue uh, so that I can hold it and get a good bead on what I'm doing. So I just put a little dab of glue and I'm just crossing those over, okay? And I'm gonna hold it. And you see how it cupped that petal? Because that's what this is, it's a petal. And, you, and you, you're gonna get that cup in it like that. And I've already got my curl from where I pulled it off the mat. If you didn't, you're gonna wanna take your tool and you're gonna wanna curl and give your petal some curl for these, okay? And I may come back in um, and you can see on the photos, they, they don't show any curl on theirs at all. If you want to come in and curl on this one, you can at that point, uh, once you have your flower center ready, you can put a little bit of curl on those outside. Those on the inside probably should stay standing straight up because of the type of flower that it is. Okay. So we're just going to take and cup each one of these. They only take a second. You just need a little dab of glue, and you're going to cross that slit over and hold it. And then you're just going to set those to the side. These go super quick. Now, there, there are two sizes of these, so you'll want to make sure that you're keeping those separated. It will matter here in just a second which ones go first and which ones go second. But just a little bit of, just a little tiny drop of glue just to hold it. How many thought that the slits on the bottom of this meant that they went together somehow on the center of the flower. Because the first time I ever did one, that's what I thought. I was like, what are the slits for? How do we put those on there? Oh, that one goes over here. He popped apart too. They're trying to pop apart on me because I didn't hold them long enough. stayed okay I think I've got I think one has five and one has six on the sizes of these you you thought that the and that's common it's very common so now that you know what that's for when you look at your other flower patterns and you open them up and you see those slits don't automatically assume that they fit onto another piece of it just by that slit being there because that's not how they actually go they're actually meant to put those slits on there to help you cup the flower so that now you're going to be looking at your files in a totally different way right <laughs> when you open those up because i'm going to be honest with you guys some of the and i'll show you those here in a minute don't let me forget to show you handbooks um, how to find those handbooks. Um, there are no handbooks. There are no instructions anywhere that I could find in Design Space for this cartridge. Um, if I overlooked it, I overlooked it, but I don't believe I overlooked it. I just couldn't find them. So now I'm going to take my leaf or my lily pad, whatever you want to call them. These, I don't know why they gave us three unless it's just to cause dimension. I'm only going to be using one, and what I'm going to do is, I don't want to use mine just like this. I do want a little bit of cupping on it to make it look real, um, and it kind of cups up. So I'm just going to take my flower tool, and I'm going to go along this edge. And I'm just pressing down on my mat to get that, and you can see it lift up off the of mat all by itself just to get a little bit of curl going around that edge and getting a little lift on it, okay? 
That's all I'm doing. So you want to make sure if you want to get that real look. Now you can use it either way. Some people like to just stick it on there and use that flat. I like to give mine a little more realistic appearance. There's nothing wrong with any way that you want to do them. There is no right or wrong to this, guys. And I am not going to go in the this portion of it, just around those edges. Okay? But I'm not done. Now you can take your bone folder, or you can take your flower curling tool, either one, and I am just going to go along from the center and just press down and draw me a few lines. They don't have to be exact, don't have to be exact pie shapes. You can come in here and just draw you some lines. And now I have that realistic kind of look to my leaf or my lily pad. Okay? A lot of you may want to flip it over. If you want to flip it over, that's up to you. You can do it both ways. And guess what? You could probably use this for like a little miniature elephant ear file. <laughs> you can do all sorts of things with it. Look at your, your petals and your pieces. No, I do not press very hard, Paula. Just, it's just a, I want to say finger pressure. Your tool and the pad is going to do all the work. The, the, right, the harder you press, the more cupping you're going to get. So now we're going to start, and I am going to place my center, I don't know, just off to the side a little bit because I've got more leaves coming in here. So I'm going to use my hot glue again, and I'm just going to put just a little tiny touch on there, and I'm going to bring this over and just sit it on. I'm not really even concerned about where it lands on there. It's okay. Then I'm going to take the smaller petals and I'm going to walk around and start placing them on this petal. I'm just for quick, I'm going to use wet glue just to stick them in there. That way I can still move them around if I want to. But I'm just bringing those petals in. That's the large one. Just putting a little dab of glue right on them. The the thing with the wet glue is you have a you have a little bit of play time. That you're not gonna get with the hot glue. And so now I have those five petals on and you can see how they're cupping up inside and that's why I say if you do the back side you're going to get more pops of color peeping through so if, instead of just from the front and now we're going to go with our large petals and we're just going to walk those around in be and I'm coming in between the last two so where this one is split that's where one of the larger petals are going to go You want to kind of rotate those in. And you're just going to keep working yourself around. I might have gotten a little close to the edge, but that's okay. Right there. Now this is not completely dry, but there that's all there is to this lotus flower. That, that's it. We're done. My glue is a little messy there, but it dries clear and matte, so it's not going to matter. Okay, and you can take some of the curl out. If you've got too much curl, you can just bend it backwards. This would be much prettier had I used the pink on the ends like it was meant to be. But that's all there is to it, guys. So there's flower number one. Now we have cut flower number two, and you have, again, you have these little round with the disc in there. And all you're gonna do is glue those up. So we're gonna take these off the mat. But I am going to do something a little different with these. 
being that it's time, I may not have time to do both of these flowers like I wanted to. Instead of just rolling this one, guys, we may use a different technique. You can roll it, of course. You can just roll it and then roll your petals. I will show you how to do one of those. But I think I want to show you the other technique on this one. And you don't always have to use all of these petals that come with it. My phone is ringing. There we go. So again, you can start. These go pretty quick. Maybe we will have time. And we're just going to, again, I'm going to use my quilling tool, or you can use your tweezers if that's what you have, your old pinchy tweezers, and you can just start rolling. So use the tools that you have till you can get the ones that work the best. If you're going to be doing a lot of flowers, you do want to invest in the, the right tools. If you're just in a pinch, you can use other tools. You can see that this isn't staying as even as I want it to by using my tweezers. So I'm just going to keep rolling my cardstock. I'm just going to get rid of that now. I can basically roll it by hand from here. Just kind of gathering it up. My last one, I'm just going to pinch it over. That's going to be my base. I'm going to shake that out. Now you can bring that in as tight or as loose as you want. You could leave it this way and it's pretty cute. Okay? Or you can take those curling tools and you can curl those petals back like so. Just taking that and just curling it back. Giving it a little bit of extra look okay you can also use your quilling tools this is my bigger one and this is my favorite just because it's quick you can fold back one way and then come on the other side and fold back the other way and that's going to give you that pointy little look of that petal like that so when it's all rolled up when you do them all you'll see that you're going to get more dimension and more depth on your flower. Now you can see that it doesn't, I don't like the way that it does that. I like to use water. This is the same thing that I use when I do my wet method application for vinyl. I use seven ounces of water, the one ounce of alcohol to help it dry a little faster, and then a couple of drops of Dawn or dish soap. You can leave that out if you're not doing wet vinyl, uh, wet method application. But I like to kind of spritz my cardstock. You don't need a lot, just a little, just to get it a little bit moist. And then you can roll that around any of your tools, skewers, anything. And once you have it rolled, just kind of scrunch it up. Okay? And then unroll it. And it's going to put all those little wrinkles in your paper and give you that look of cray paper. And then, of course, your same thing. You got that little split in there. You're going to put a little drop of glue and you're going to bring it in and give yourself that cup. Now you've got that nice, pretty petal with the cup in it that you can add in. And you can do that to all of these rolled flowers and bring those up. Of course, I don't have time to do that. That, that is very time consuming technique, guys. I'm just going to tell you. It took me an hour and a half to do this one. And that did not include the drying time. But it's going to give you a totally different look to your rolled flowers. So all you want to do on the rolled part is take your mist and just kind of mist it. Don't worry if it gets too wet. It will dry. And you can use a heat, if you have uh, embossing tools, the heat embossers, um, you can, or hair dryers. You can use your hair dryer. And you can... Um, most definitely dry them. And I'm just rolling that up, giving it a pinch. That 
was the wrong tool. Sorry about that. Don't do it that way. Scrunching that up. And you'll just want to be careful because they are connected. But now I have that look on that petal. And as it dries, I can come in here or while I'm using a hair dryer or heat emboss gun, I can come in and I can do some curling on these to give them that more realistic look. Because when you dampen that cardstock, you can do more with it without it ripping. Because now you can see that I really have that petal look on that one. But you have to go through and do them on all of them. Okay? So that dampening and then scrunching it and then rolling it, I would actually probably, after I did all my scrunching, I would probably glue mine and then mist it again and then come back and, and do my decor about where I wanted it to sit. I'm just going to go ahead and glue this one so that we get it glued into place. But you can see, like I said, we don't have time to do all the techniques and everything that you can do to these, but I just wanted to show you guys the difference. These have nothing done to them. Oops, I'm off camera a little bit. These have nothing done to them, and you see how they're standing up? This is one that I spritzed and I rolled, and you can see that more realistic look of the petal that I've got. Do I need to? Maybe I can focus and zoom in. Can you see that? Totally different look. You're going to get an absolutely, totally different look. Uh, Kate, you may need to log out and log back in because I'm showing that it is showing on screen. So, awesome little techniques that you can do, guys. Let me s focus back in on the deck here. Is that clear, guys? Can you guys see? Looks clear. Okay. So, we'll work on this some more while I cut the next flower. Probably shouldn't have cut but one of those. I will finish these up and show you guys what they look like and still photos in the group. Um, and you can even, that's what I was going to tell you, you can even mix and match your petals. But all of these separate petals, you're, after you've done them, you're going to come in and start building on the outside. You can tuck some of them on the inside. Put them where you need them. You won't need all of these. It depends on how big you want your rows to be as to how many of these you use. You can even use these and make some rose buds. You can roll these up tighter and roll them as they're wet and create some petals folded over. Oops. Like so. And you can even make some rose buds. I would do probably three of them after I rolled them, scrunched them, and dried them. Okay. Make up, make up some rose petals for those. So you can do some rose buds to go with these. Because they put plenty of these in there. Just because they're in the file does not mean you have to use them. That, I can't stress that enough. Just because that's the way that they set it up when you bring it in doesn't mean you have to use everything they gave you. Yeah, the spritz definitely helps, Donna. It definitely helps. Let's go back over to Design Space and let's pick the third flower. So I'm going to hit Finish here. And I'm just going to get rid of these so we don't get mixed up. But you can see they give you tons in here. By the time that you roll all that up, if you want, you can just put all these, but you can mix and match two colors and get that two-tone rose. Uh, lots of stuff there. So the, we've done this one, and we've done this one, and you can see how they did. They just went around and added all those to the outside, and it looks like they may have stuck a couple 
on the inside here just to beef it up after rolling it. But again, you do not have to have everything that they stuck in there. Next is the calla lily. And this is going to be fun, guys, all of those cuts. We're going to work on this. Oops, I just tore that second flower. I'm glad that I cut too. Um, we're going to work on that other flower and doing some uh, techniques. I'm going to show you a couple of other things that you can do to those petals while this one is cutting. And we're going to start cutting with that green because that's the one that's going to take all the time. And in this file, you will notice, if you're looking at that screen, your center there's a grid back there, and I know that looks awfully strange, but we're going to fix that. Right here, we're going to ungroup. This needs to be, you can see that the color says yellow, but it's not showing yellow. It should be fine. You can leave it like it is, um, I think. It should be fine. You're just going to cut that piece out of yellow, and it's just not going to show you over here. Hopefully, it will show on the mat. Again, I'm not resizing anything. We're just going to hit make it, and you can see when it comes over to the mat, it does show yellow. Don't worry about seeing the grid back there. We're not printing cut, so it's not going to matter. Okay? And I'm going to cut the white first because we can be working on that while the green cuts. So I'm just loading my mat. Same thing, I'm using the 80 pound card stock to cut mine. And then we're just gonna hit the flashing C. You had to log out, because I'm showing green and everything seems to be fine. The cow will, um, oh, what's the name of that? You got me stumped, Sue. But there's another technique that you can do with your flowers, guys, um, and that's inking. In case some of you have never inked before. There's our calla lily, and then it wants my yellow paper. Um, inking is a fun way to get another shade of color on your petals without a lot of work to give them a more realistic look. So what you would need in that case would be some daubers and some ink. Um, I think I think this raspberry might show up on there. So I'm just going to take my scrap paper here. I'm going to open that up, and I'm going to open the ink. And grab a dauber and then I'm just gonna dab in there and then you can come back and you can do some shading on the petals now if you're going to be wetting them and rolling them I suggest that you do that prior so where's that one I did there it is and let it dry and then come in and ink that okay and that's just so that the ink doesn't run. But you can see how it's getting some shading on the, the end of the petal there. And then when you go and put it in there, you're going to see different shades. It's going to make it pop just a little bit more. So inking is a, a fun way to get another different look out of your design. And I should have cut that on intricate. I'm going to tell you guys to cut that on intricate because it tried to chew it up right there. But inking is going to help you so that we're 
good to go with that. have scores so you're going to need your scoring wheel or your scoring stylus if you're doing the calla lily let that go if you want a specific inking area you can overlay your pieces and then ink and then you can get that specific shape on your inking so there are tons of ways that you can ink, play around with it, and put your flowers together. They're going to look odd, but once you have them put together, it, it will come together on you, and you'll see. It's blurry. Is that better? Did that show better? But you can see the inked edges. And all I did was lay one up. Is it still blurry? Because I'm showing clear on one and blurry on the other. That's weird. That shows blur. Let me see if I can get you guys back in focus. Now it's worse. Okay, let me get something I can see. I think I went in and out. Let me know when you guys can see the ink pad clear. I may have missed it when I got it back on there. Is that better? Okay. Sorry about that. So you just want to make sure that you get your inking done on there. That you'll see it. I'm having a little bit of a weird, well, it asked me, oh, huh, what happened? My tip came off of my, my scoring tool. No wonder it didn't want to score. Let's try that again. So while that's going, Let's work on our calla lily. And I like to get, I like to use my flower tool on this and get a good cup down here at the bottom. And personally, I would miss this and, and do a slight scrunch on mine. Hopefully it won't be too much for, I don't want a lot, but I want it to look realistic. It'll pop back in, Donna. And I'm just gonna do some slight scrunching right here in the middle. I'm not doing a lot. Just to help me with getting a real look on my flower. I might have done too much. Just gonna mist it and pull some of it out my fingers and then again you can use your heat tool should you need to dry it
that gave me a little bit of cup. So the way, any way that you want to get yours going. And then I'm using a bigger tool here and doing a roll on this one. It's cow lily. The end really has a little twist on it. I'm trying to get that sharp point. I like realistic. This Personally, I don't like this pattern because I, don't, I like more space in mine. I have one that I made for my cray paper, which gives me a lot more space than this one does. This one will do, though. It's okay. But that's about the shape that you want on it. Let me get those leaves cut, and we'll put this together. So now I have this piece here and I need to do a little snip where mine got messed up. And this one you're going to need, most likely you're going to need your quilling tool. And I know that it looks crazy, you don't start at the small end on this. Uh, am I rolling this the right, nope, rolling it the wrong way. It's, I have to remember, I set my whole file up different from this. I think this is the right way for their file. Start on this side here and roll inward. It's just not going to work for me. I need something longer. I know how a calla lily is supposed to look, and this one is just not cut like I want it to be. These things are just not long enough or something. I think they've got theirs roll going a different direction. So start from the big end with your fringe at the top. I tried to do it the other way and it wouldn't work. Because those are supposed to go all the way down the stamen and they, this one is not that realistic looking just honestly. So I'm just going to roll it this way. Just going to try to get it rolling. So it has to go from that large size in. And then their fringe is going to be pushed down after that. Your fringe is, you're going to pop your fringe out, basically. Again, I don't like the way this one is designed. I have one, and I think I did make it public at one point. If you guys want my calla lily file, you are welcome to it. Just let me know. This just didn't cut or something. The lines didn't cut. But it's supposed to have little bitty fringes all the way down, not... To me, this looks like a, I don't know, a spiral. This reminds me of a one of those floppy, you know, I'm, the floppy balloons, the, the stick person you see outside the car dealerships. That's what this looks like to me. But that's the way they have it rolled. You're going to roll it from the large side with the fringe at the top down to the middle. Okay? And then you're just going to glue it right there. I think I'm going to give myself space in case that piece that they've got cut in here. I have never cut this file, guys. I Just so you know, I have not cut these files. I'm just going to pull our cowl lily out of there. And it does have a little bit of a score on it so that you can pinch them. use my spatula to get this one off the mat. 
because all those scores really glued it down. Hopefully I won't tear it. Should have used a blue mat for this one. And this is your stem, guys, just so you know. They've got all those scores in there so it will be easy to roll. I still don't know how easy it's going to be to roll. Instead of using a flower stem, that's what they've done. Maybe I can get it started. But that is what this is. I think I would skip this piece and just use a flower stem, personally. I'm trying to write the scores to roll. Super tight. This is probably one of those times where the misting would really come in handy. That's super, super hard to do. Being paper to make this and make sure that it was nice and tight and even and glued all the way down. But for time purposes, I'm just gonna roll it best I can on camera for you guys. Yeah, I don't even, I don't even care for the way this is made, but okay. I'm, I'm going to live with it. I'm just going to glue all the way down the stem. Trying to get it to to stick and stay rolled and not square up on me. <laughs> Who, who who's got wine? Somebody's got wine? Yeah, there is a delay, Andrea. There is a slight delay. This file needs work, guys. You're going to have to play with this file on, again, if you want my calla lily file, just request it. Go over to craftingwithapril.co and ask for it. This is just a pain right here, and it's not, I don't, I don't like the look of it. I don't like the look of the, the flower either. The stem is just too big for the the flower but we're gonna this is the way that they did the file we're gonna put it together so I am just going to <clears throat> I'm gonna just use wet glue for this right here at the base of the flower and I am going to because it was too small for me to even get my petal to, to look like a flower petal gonna hold it for a second you know I can't cup it enough and get the bulb is what I'm trying to say I can't get enough bulb on this that I want for the look that I want it's kind of weird and I did leave enough of the stem sticking up so I could hot glue this piece in there so that you have it but I'm not a fan of this file I'm just gonna say it I don't like it I would say this needs to be wrapped around the stem too before you glue it 
but I didn't. So wrap up the yellow around this stem and then wrap the white. I would actually go into the file. Let's go over and I would show you what I would do to this file, honestly. I would come in here to this one because I don't like, I don't even, I, this is, I don't even like it enough to put the leaves on it. The leaves are fine. Uh, I think that they're plenty big enough, but I would unlock this and skew it just a little bit wider and then roll it from this tip right here. Let's see, short side out. Yeah. Roll it from here on the left side to the right, this being the outside of the petal. And that way you've got a little bit more room to give it that bulb, which is what I would do. I would use a wire stem. I would make this a little bit bigger like I just did. And I wouldn't even use this, honestly. Um, I would cut the fringe a little bit deeper so that it could relax more and then wrap this around my stem and then wrap the white. To request my file, Andrea, um, now mine, mine will work for paper, but it was designed for cray paper, um, but you can go to craftingwithapril.co. Thank you, Jamie. And uh, once you're in craftingwithapril.co, just go to request a file. I know it says on there at the time that the only two files available for request or the earrings and the purse, but I will just put calla lily file in there and I will send it to you. I'll send you the link for it because I don't even like this file at all. Um, maybe it was the way we put it together. I don't know. I'm, I'm just not happy with it. I like my flowers to look realistic and I can't get a, there's nothing I, there is absolutely nothing I could do to this file to get a realistic look out of it. So, we tried. <laughs> so let's do the next one. Go to cartridges. Let's go to 3 elegant 3D. And it's right here. These are just rolled right here guys these two so we're not going to do those this is the same as this just a different shape petal so we're not going to do that but i am going to do the carnation and the daffodil and the magnolia and i mean i'm sorry the tulip i think because of time purposes we're an hour and a half in we will next week on girls night do a giant flower and these two so we'll do these two tonight these are basically just rolled. All you're going to do is roll those. These are used for flower centers. Is what I use them for. Um, but we will do the daffodil and the magnolia next girls' night, Friday girls' night, and a giant flower, and we'll do these two tonight. Does that sound good? Because I, I knew that this would be a long video, um, but I didn't anticipate it would take us this long. So... Yeah, these two with the giant and this one. So let's do the parrot tulip. We're just going to hit make it. I'm not resizing it, not doing anything. We're just going to make it. So let's cut our brown and we will go back and work on... That. These should cut pretty fast. I'll put these in fast cut mode. And next week I will pre-cut. So you guys pre-cut your flowers for next week. Yes, 
Donna's pipe cleaners would probably do good in there. Um, but still, if you wanted to bend it, the way that they've got that file set up, you can't even bend the stem. Um, so I'm that that kind of that's why I said the the file. I don't like the way the file is set up actually for that one. So now I don't even know what this piece is here. Um, but it's pale yellow, isn't it? I had that yellow here. I'm just going to cut it out of yellow. Might be the wrong color to cut that from, but that's what we're going to cut it from. So what else have you guys been working on? I'm having coffee, not wine. So now I've got my yellow piece cut. We're going to go to our green piece. I have to have 12 by inch paper for that. Why do I have to have 12 inch paper for that? What is it? Mm. It's a stem. Don't need the 12 inch paper. I'm just going to let it cut like it cuts. Because I'm definitely not using the stem for this. Not after the last stem. English paper piercing for quilts. I've heard of that. I think I, I think my aunt has done that. I have, I have not personally done that. Bring extra wine, Donna. I didn't. I didn't go to the store, so I didn't get to grab any wine. I was busy all day long. I mean, all day long. You did the Easter card with the chick on it? How did they turn out, Paula? I didn't get to see, guys, I didn't get to see pictures today um, because I did paperwork all day long. I mean, since 7 a.m. until 4.30, I did paperwork. I did not have a fun day. Wow, those are spread out, aren't they? Do you guys see that? I should have moved them. Let's move them. Is it going to let me? It isn't going to let me. Oh, they're attached in the file. Guys, make sure you move yours in the file. I should be okay. I'm just going to turn my paper around with the 11 inch side along the top. And it should be fine. You guys can't see me because you're seeing what I'm cutting. But I am using the Dreamy pack from Michaels. The Dreamy, and it's got the pinks and the grays in it. I'm using the darker pink out of it and the lighter pink for this flower. Just because I don't want these mixed up with the others. See if you guys can see it while it's cutting. I'm using the. It's not mech dreamy, it's just dreamy. The 
dreamy paper. That's what it made me think of, though, was McDreamy. Gray's anatomy. <laughs> oh, you made a vinyl. Oh, that's cool, Donna. I have uh, the ring doorbell. That's the only thing that I have ring, but it announces when they do stuff. Those are all spread out. Oh, well. That's what happens when you get in a hurry. Don't be in a hurry like me. I'll use some of that paper for punches. Oops. Don't do that either. Let's see, that last mat, I'm going to go and check it. See if I can get by with, yep. I just want to make sure that I could put my paper on the long end for that piece too. Make sure you go in and ungroup for once they attached instead of, instead of um, grouping and it stayed that way. So, this is supposedly the stem for this one. And it didn't even score. Didn't even have any score lines on it. So, I'm going to say no. <laughs> I am going to say, just for the video, we use that stem. Um, and not make this one. Just so we have something to use. Because I would use wire anyway because I would want it to be um, more realistic wire and tape. I am assuming that this is the center. Let's go over and look at the file as soon as that finishes cutting, but I'm pretty sure this is the center piece. And our cooling tool only goes so far, so that makes it tough. Before I do that, I'm going to go look at the file to see where this piece goes. Like I said, I haven't made this file before. The ones I made were Leah Griffith, and these are definitely not Leah Griffith flowers. So let's open a new window, and I'm going to take you guys over there, and we're going to look at it and see how it goes together. It's a, that's a hands-on project. Where, where is that one at, Jody? I know they've done them in several places. Which one are they doing it at, today, at this time? Yeah, if you get a chance to go to one of those, go, guys. Sometimes they give away Cricut Cuties when you go to those things. done so we can go over there all right I'm gonna cancel or finish or unload my mat and dismiss and all that good stuff and we're gonna go and take a look at that flower pretty sure this is the center that go this goes around this but this file is so weird on some of these, it's probably not even going to show us. And that's what it looks like. This is the dead center, I'm going to say. Because there are no... Is it all Joann's tomorrow? I haven't read my email on that yet. I've got my Michaels, my Hobby Lobby, my um, craft stash, my craft bundles. <laughs> I've got about 400 emails to go through after I get through here tonight. So guys, it doesn't show us in the file, but we're going to show, this is the long skinny piece in the file, and then of course your leaf is self-explanatory. Then the brown piece is going to wrap around this yellow piece that we cut, and I can just barely see it sticking up right there, and that's what tells me it goes dead center. So let's pop back over. 
and I am my quilling tool isn't long enough for this um, I would actually chop it off if it were me but so I'm just going to use something that's cylindrical and just roll it around just going to improvise because if I try to put it on there and it's too long for this it's just going to rip it and I'm just going to let that relax just a little bit. I'm not going to glue that one yet like I did the other. I'm not going to get impatient. We're going to pull all of our leaves, our petals off. I don't know why I want to call my petals leaves these days, but I do. It cut pretty well. I'm surprised. Very fine. Cut good. And I do want to put a little bit of a cup on mine uh, just to get it going. Just right here where the split is is all I'm doing. Just pressing down and getting a cup there. And then we're going to glue those. Actually, I probably... Eh, I don't know why they set this up like that, but they did getting the same exact cup on those is not going to be easy. But we can do it. I'm just going to glue a couple of them. We're going to see. Again, you got those little splits on there, so you're going to bring them in, glue them, and get them cupped. And then they're going to glue to the back of each one of these petals, just like this. So that one I did that way. I'm going to say don't do it that way because it's just not, it's going to be impossible to get the same cupping and get that to lay like it needs to. So I'm just going to take these and this one, and I am going to my glue on here. I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to line up the splits just like that to each one. Wrong piece, April. Wet glue is going to give you a little bit more slide time so that you can put those together then the hot glue will. Just make sure that you're able to be able to split it. And then you're going to want to do your cupping. Just right there on the split, just to give it some give. And it's just going to help you put it together easier when you go to, to bring those two pieces together. Because I'll have less stress on it. And then you're, of course, going to bring those around just to get that cup. If you guys have done any of the Leah Griffith papers and the Cray paper, her parrot tulip is awesome. It is awesome. Um, we put those together at the Cricut Mountain Makeathon. I may have to do... Oh, there it goes. Um, and they were so super easy to do. They turned out gorgeous. I 
I am using art glitter glue for these. It grabs pretty quick, but it gives you a little bit of play so that you can get without burning your fingers. I like to use I like to use wet glue to put my petals and stuff together and then use hot glue to put them arrange the head of the flower, I should say. So just to do the individual petals, I use wet glue. And then to put the flower together, I use hot glue. So that's just me. It's totally up to you. Because I can do this faster and not burn my fingers with the, the wet glue. Um, just my preference for, this, for these parts of it. I'm just going to roll that up and glue it. Like here, I will use a little dab of hot glue because I don't need tons of time. It's already rolled up. And then I'm going to take this piece and put it right on the top. I'm just going to put a little dab of glue down here and roll that up. And then I'm going to take my paper curling and you want to be careful because you don't want to pull them off of that base just going to kind of roll these back like so and don't worry about you can do them tighter make sure that they roll up along there I'm going to I forgot to put my stem in there, this weird stem. So I'm just going to put some glue on there and put the weird stem in there. I did leave myself enough space to do it with. Again, wind it around there. I'm just not used to using these paper stems. I'm used to using my wire stem, so I keep forgetting it. Get my hot glue time to cool. Just trying to loosen up the rest of it on me because I heated it up. There's a link down below for the glue gun. That's a ch the Chandler glue gun. If you use the, there's a code also, you get 20% off. It's from Amazon. So now we have those on, and now we're just going to go through and put in these cups cupped area. We're just going to place that in there. We're going to walk these around. Okay. I'm going to overlap maybe about half, I think. These are really weird the way they did this file. I might pinch that in more. I think I am. Gonna pinch it a little bit more. I didn't curl mine. I forgot to curl them. Just gonna let those dry while I do some curling here. I'm flipping it over this way and I'm gonna curl back here. So that you're cupped the opposite way. Nobody noticed I didn't curl it. Nobody said anything. Curl your petals. You can't get a real look without a curl. I would probably in, if I weren't pressed for time like we are on videos, I would probably moisten these and get a real good curl where I could curl it with my tools and get some really good curl on all these delicate pieces. Make it really, really, really super pretty. 
now that I think that that's hardened enough, I'm going to come in here. Never too late to fix a goof up. Maybe for that area. No, we'll still get it. Always away, always away. That worked. Got a little bit of curl going on that. Hey, Denise. And we're just gonna put our next petal on. Just kind of cupping it in there. Actually, this one should be, I don't have enough area to get it in there like I want it. I'm gonna kind of Kind of press it in between here. Get a little pinch. Behind this one and in front of this one. Hopefully I got enough glue in there to get it to, to stick. Let it sit. And I'm going to tack some glue right here on the edge of this petal because the three petals need to make your center on this. Maybe I can get it to hold that way. And I'm going to tack a little bit here because there's a lot of stress. I'm going to say that this file, guys, while you can use 65, I'm thinking it's going to do better with paper. Honestly because you're going to be able to work it more. If you're going to use 65, I'm going to say spritz it so that you have some give on the paper because there's just so much stress on it to do this one. And then we've got our three outside leaves. Now these are going to go on the, uh, where they meet, these are going to go on the in-betweens is what I call them, the in-betweens. Most definitely spritz if you're using 65. And then this one should go here. The hot glue is even softening up the layer before. Holding it from the inside as well. Give it time to sit. Not too bad for the first one. I Like I said, I don't like the way that this goes together. I prefer the stems, as I've said. And then we have our leaf. And I'm just gonna curl down that one, right down the middle. I'm gonna give it a little bit more curl. I like the leaf. The leaf did well. I'm just not a fan of the stem. Let's see. Let's put it right there. Yeah, I would probably spritz this and roll it around that stem as well. I know that's going to be hot. I know it's going to burn me, but guess what? I'm going to do it anyway. I always do. Eh, it 
cooled down enough. You guys got quiet. Are you are you drinking wine out there without me? <laughs> On girls' night, it's not too bad. It's not exactly what I like. I would like one more petal. I think right here, and then I would be happy with it. And a little bit more curl. So on 65 pound paper, make sure you spritz it for this one. Yeah, the the leaf did well. I'm not I'm not thrilled about. I like the outer. I'm I'm just gonna say I like the cut of this petal. I don't like the paper I used. If I'm gonna do this paper, I'm going to spritz it. I'm going to roll it. I'm probably going to scrunch it a little bit. And then I will be able to wrap it around. Because of the slit, I could wrap it around a um, wire stem a lot better. It just doesn't fit the stem. Of course, I did use the stem from the other one, though, but it's the same thing. Uh, this one just wasn't scored, but it's exactly the same. So I'm going to say that the tulip on that and the calla on that are both, in my book, a fail. But the, the parrot tulip, the petal, and the leaf are good. It's just the paper isn't working. Hey, Gerald. <laughs> hey, I'm lying, Jody. So if you're planning on doing those, I'm... The Leah Calla, my Calla Lily, and but the Leah Parrot Tulip guys, that is an awesome file. That one's going to be hard to beat by any stretch of the means. I, I mean, seriously, Leah Griffith's tulip pattern. I mean, yeah, her parrot head tulip pattern is to die for. It's it's a great great file. So we're going to finish up with the carnation and call it a night for tonight and then next week we're going to do the daffodil and the magnolia with a giant flower we're gonna make one of them giant I don't know which one yet so let's go ahead and pop over and get the carnation oops didn't want all of those Ooh, maybe we should save the carnation for next week, guys, <laughs> because all of those have to be glued. I'm going to say that yes. Yes, yes, yes. Um, I didn't realize they had all these little petals. I thought it was strictly a roll. This is a roll with all the extra petals. So we're going to do all three of these next week. This one, this one, and this one. We're going to do next Friday night, girls' night. Does that sound good to everybody? These three, and which one would you like to be giant? The Magnolia? Maybe? I say yes. I think we should do the Magnolia in a giant. Yeah, it's super intricate. I didn't realize. I thought it was just a roll. And we were going to roll it. But that's too much. I'm looking at the time and I only have another four minutes. Um, and there's no way I can do that flower in four minutes. If it was a rolled, I could. There's no way I can do that one in four. So, sounds good to you guys? All right. We'll set that up for next Friday. We'll do more flowers. Um, we're calling it Girls' Night or Flower Friday, whatever you guys want to call it. But we're going to be working on different flowers using different materials, different things. We're going to be finding out what works, what doesn't, which we did tonight. You can see that some of it works, some of it doesn't. But we can make it work with different techniques uh, by spritzing. If you have the hard card stock and things like that, then you can. Um, 
just like I was telling you guys, this is impossible to do with just regular cardstock, but with a technique, we can make it work. We can do this with cray paper as well. So we figured this one out, and I've already done the video for it. Um, I did you a video, a short video for Jennifer yesterday. She was in a hurry and needed this, so we, I did a short video for this one, which was supposed to be with tonight's too, but um, we did these, and I did a short 10-minute video for you guys yesterday on this. So it's up and available for you to make the peonies, and you can do those in any size that you want. The Lotus, I'm happy with. I really like the Lotus flower, even though I messed up on my ink pens. Um, the Lotus, I'm, I love that file. So I'm going to be making another one of those, and I'll do a picture of it with it done with the colors colored on the front and the back so that you guys can see what the difference is on that. Um, that's what I was telling you. I'm going to ink it so that you can see. I'm not even going to use my pen. I'm just going to take the, the drawing out of the file, and I'm going to ink them myself and show you what those can look like. So I'll do that. Um, I will revisit, we will revisit this on a Friday night. I think we'll do this and we'll spritz and take the time and dry them and do this one, this file with a different one. And I already have a calla lily file. So, because I wouldn't use this personally, I'm just saying. And then I will also do pictures of these. I will roll this one up and wet it. I showed you the technique. I showed you the inking. I will go ahead and complete one of these and get you guys a picture for it. Just the file so you can find it on the Leah Griffith Parrot one. Let me see. Um, I don't think, yeah, I think it's from her website. Um, you have to get, let's see, check check the prices too because sometimes you can get her book and everything on Amazon. Did, did they add her flower to Design Space? I don't know if they added that to Access or not, but we'll look. Um, let's see. Her hydrangea is awesome, guys. It's an awesome file. Oh, I don't want to be in there. I want to be in images. There we go. Um, that's her rose. A lot of her stuff got added. Let me... But I don't know if that parrot head tulip got added or not. That's not hers. That's the parrot tulips. That's the one we just did that I'm not real happy with. I'm, I think I'm going to modify it. There is her hydrangea. That's the flower head wreath. <laughs> I can show you a photo of what it looks like, but I don't, I believe it's in her, in my uploads. I believe it's an upload file from her. I don't think it was released. Some of hers got released, but that one I don't think did. Um, let's see. That's her paper whites. They got released. Do a different search here. That's not hers. That's the one we just did. Okay, um, I can show you a photo of it, Jody. Um, 
I posted it in groups three years ago, I think. Um, but it's an awesome file. Let's see if I can find it in my photos here. <laughs> now I found my poinsettia and the other dahlia, the cray paper dahlia. There is my calla lily. That one's done in red. So that's what I was saying. There's just not enough material on that other one to get that swirl. Um, yeah, there's just not enough in that file that they gave us. Yeah, there you go. It's in that one, Jody, that Jamie just mentioned. But yeah, you just have to learn to work with these paper files and see what works, see what doesn't work, because some of them you just can't get enough on, like that calla lily right there. That's my file. Um, right. But her, a lot of her flowers you can cut in different things. So, as you can see, I mean, this is totally different than the one that we just cut. Um, because the one we cut just doesn't have enough dimension to, to get that wrap that you need. Uh, but you can do it with cardstock. I've done them with cardstock instead of cray. Um, so we'll just keep working with them, and we're going to do Flower Fridays. Uh, until we run out of things that we can do and I don't see us running out of flowers anytime soon so we're just going to set it up that flower Fridays or girls night on Friday nights um, we will pick some flowers and we will do it not all of them will run as long as tonight did I just wanted to give you guys a good jump on some flowers uh, since spring is coming but usually on Friday nights it'll only be about an hour so don't worry about that okay I think that might be it right there. That's it right there. I found it. It is not in design space. It is uploaded. You can see there's no A on it. Um, but yeah, this that's it right there. That's her file. That's her parrot head file. And you can see the difference in the way that those are cut. Huge difference in the files. Big, big, big difference. So thank you guys for joining me. Thank you moderators. Thank you Kofi and Patreon supporters. I know this was a long video night. Next week it will only be an hour. We'll do the three um, Files, I will cut that carnation. I will pre-glue a lot of that so we only have to put it together. But I will cut a couple of extra petals to show you techniques so that you can see how it's done. And then we'll just assemble. Um, so if you want to assemble with me, go ahead and cut yours. You know that you have to fold those tails, cross them over, and get that cup and glue those. And just have everything cut and ready to go and we will do assembly. Okay, I will show you a couple of techniques um, if you want to just cut a couple of petals and then leave the rest of them so you can do technique on them. These I will probably moisten and scrunch, but we'll see. 
You guys have a wonderful night, and I will catch you on Monday, 7 p.m. Not sure what we're going to do, but I believe it's probably going to be a card or some vinyl. Y'all have a wonderful weekend.